you think you are a good programmer and you understand object orientation. Can you answer a pretty basic Java question that trips many people up? Let's have a look. In Java, what part of a program can access a class member that is marked public or private or protected or not marked at all? Please fill in the entries in this matrix. Can the class member, meaning field or method, be accessed from the same class, from a derived class, from a class that doesn't inherit from it but is in the same package, or from a class that doesn't inherit and is in another package? I'll fill in the easy parts. When the member is declared public, it can be accessed from anywhere, and when it's declared private, it can only be accessed from within the class where it is defined. Now your turn. Are you able to fill in the other two columns correctly? Stop the video and put your yeses and nos in the remaining cells. It should not be hard, but think about it for as long as you need and write your answer down before restarting the video. Okay, stop now. I mean it. Stop and answer. Welcome to Frank Stajano Explains. I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Technology at the University of Cambridge, and I'm here to help all of you become better computer scientists. If you want to nail down this business of private, protected, and so on, once and for all, I really urge you to commit to your own answer before going on. All right. This sounds like a typical bookwork question. Just learn how Java defines these various keywords, apply the definition, and problem solved, right? Well, yes, except that the evidence shows that plenty of quite intelligent people still get confused about protected and package. Package being the default access mode that applies in Java when no modifier is explicitly indicated. The basic idea is that a member with protected access can be accessed from derived classes and a member with package access from classes in the same package. So there are two cells that are straightforward to fill in. From a derived class, I can access a protected member and from a class in the same package, I can access a member with package access. Everyone gets that. Now the slightly less obvious. When a field is unmarked, meaning that it has package access, can it be accessed from a derived class in another package? Well, no. For package access, you must be in the same package. To be able to access it from a derived class in another package, then the member would have to be marked protected or otherwise public to be accessible from anywhere. And most people get this right. But what about the dual case? When a class member is protected, can it be accessed from a non-derived class in the same package? Some people make the symmetric argument and say no. To be able to access it from an unrelated class in the same package, the member would need to be declared with at least package access, meaning no modifier, or otherwise public. But they would be wrong. The Java language specification, of which I have a, an early copy here that I bought when Java came out, I think this was something like 1990, 1990 what, 1996, first printing August 1996, uh, and I have a newer one here, which is for Java 8. Uh, and this would have been 2024. 20, okay, the Java language specification, and it says the same thing in both, um, says that if the member is declared protected, then access is permitted from any subclass or also from any class in the same package. So that trips a few people up because package and protected are not behaving symmetrically. One of them seems to be more powerful than the other. And people, you know, memorize this exception, but then, as often happens when you memorize something without fully understanding it, they still trip over it when it comes to applying it because the two concepts of protected and package are sufficiently similar that they're easily confused. And it's not obvious which of the two should be more powerful than the other. So what we need to do here is not just memorize the definition from the Java language specification, but understand why it was defined that way. Okay, so pretend I'm developing a robot class. Of course, from within this class, I will always have access to the members of the class, whatever modifier I stick in front of them. But there are also other programmers in the world. For example, the ones who buy my wonderful robot class. And then, because this is object-oriented programming, they inherit from it and make their own classes out of it. They make a uh, communicating robot extends robot, or heavy lifting robot extends robot, or flying robot extends robots, and so on and so forth. To build their fancier versions of my robot, they may need access to my class members, and I'm happy to grant it to them by marking the members as protected. Note, I'm still encapsulating my class members because programmers who are not developing a robot or a subtype of robot, but are just using a pre-made robot as is, they will not be able to mess around with the robot fields or to invoke robot methods if I declare them protected. Okay. But then there's also another category of programmers, and that's my colleagues in my software house where I work. Uh, and they work on my same project. I'm writing the robot class, but perhaps some of my colleagues are writing the 
positronic brain class, which is what makes a robot do its clever stuff. And these two things go together, and we sell them together to our customers in the same package, say package Asimov provided we don't get into copyright trouble. Now, Java gives me a facility to grant my colleagues special access to some of my class's data members, which I do by putting no access modifier in front and thus declaring them as package access. But surely, if my colleagues are allowed to put code in the same package as me, which people outside our company in cannot do, then I want to give them at least as much access as I am giving to those external programmers from other companies that might inherit from our classes, right? So it would make no sense to give external programmers more access to my classes members than I give to my colleagues who work on the same package with me. So that's why anything that can be done by classes that extend my class can also be done by classes in my own package, even if they don't extend my class, because they're you know, more closely related to my class than even the descendants. And therefore, fields and methods that are marked protected can be accessed by classes in the same package, even if they're not derived classes. And that's the reason. And if you understand this viewpoint, then it's no longer surprising. Now, since we got here, I've got another question for you. In my robot class, I have a bunch of components, you know, pretend, mechanical, electronic parts, all that stuff. So let's say I stick them into an array list. So I can have component zero, component one, component 36, and so on. I can add a component, remove a component, and so forth. And those programmers who inherit from my robot class to make fancier robots, they may want to add their own components to the bunch. So I make my field protected to let them access it. I declare you know, protected array list of capital component, uh, lowercase component, which grants access to the external programmers who write derived classes. And of course, my colleagues with write access to the package can access this field as well. I'm using the access modifiers just as Java, Java defines them, all right? But then, when I try to check in my code into the repository, a more senior programmer from my team reviews my code and tells me, no, that's poor practice. It's syntactically correct and it compiles, okay, but it's poor software engineering what you're doing. You don't want to do it that way. You should declare this data member private and then offer protected methods for adding items to it, removing items and so on. But why does he tell me that? Stop the video once again and write down your own answer. And I'll wait for a moment. Okay, welcome back. Did you write down an answer? Or at least, did you think of one? Do it before we go on. What did you say? You should make the field private to enforce encapsulation, to ensure that those pesky programmers from external organizations cannot mess around with your beautiful code and make it break your invariance and so on. Is that what you said? Beep. <laughs> well, I'm afraid if that's what you said, that's wrong. It's a common misconception. That is not the reason for making the field private. Those guys, those other programmers who inherit from robot, are not polluting your code. They're writing their own code. That's the whole point of inheritance, object-oriented programming. Your code stays clean no matter how messy they make their own derived class. It's their class that becomes garbage. And if they do that, it's not really your problem. It doesn't affect any of your code base or the code that you've sold to your other customers who also derive from robot. The real reason why you want to make your field private is because you might one day want to change your own code. You might study more advanced data structures and decide that you, know, you no longer want to store your components in an array list, but in something fancier like a map or even a B tree. And hey, with this new implementation that you just came up with, your robot now goes 20 times faster and you can now sell your customers an upgrade to version 2.0 at the premium and you bring in a lot more sales and you get a pay rise. Now, if you had declared that array list as a protective field, what happens? All your previous programmer customers who bought the version 1.0, 1.1, 1.2 of your robot class, by now will have written millions of lines of code that access that array list. If in version 2.0 you change to a B3 or whatever else, each of your clients who inherited from robot must change their code before you will even compile against your new version. So I don't think you're gonna sell that many copies, even if it goes 20 times faster. And that's why you want to make your data members private, so that you can give yourself the freedom to improve the implementation later. Of course, you still need to give your clients the ability to add and remove components of their derived robot, but they don't need to know what data structure you're storing these components in, so long as you give them some methods to do it. So give them a clean and streamlined API, an application programming interface, instead of giving them raw access to your implementation details. And note that here, that even if you mark the field as protected, you're still giving them raw access. Protected means you're not giving access to everyone, but to those ones to whom you are giving access, you're giving them raw access. They can do anything you like. 
an experienced software developer won't do that. Instead, you should use the software development equivalent of the need to know principle. Mediate access through suitable accessor methods so that you can retain the freedom to change your implementation. If you like it when I go into technical programming issues, coding style, proper software engineering practice and so forth, then you might enjoy this other video here. If you have any questions or comments, stick them below. If you learned anything useful from this video, then give it a like. Thank you very much for staying till the end and say skiing in your comment to let me know that you did. It always makes me happy when someone does. Bye for now.